So here's the front side you guys were just looking at there, and it does give some of the specs here on the front. These little baffles here, I guess, are vents, but in my mind, I don't really think that they're needed or do anything. If you get to the top, they've got some really nice handles for the battery, but it needs them. Like I said, 104 pounds, so it is definitely a hefty battery. And then here, which I think this is sort of, I don't know, a novelty, but this is humidity and then temperature down below in Celsius. So I don't know. I think really these are geared towards using in campers, but I guess you could use them for solar storage or anything, really. But yeah, I don't know that anyone's necessarily going to use that. It certainly does look nice, though. And then over here on the front, they actually have a button for the BMS, which is really cool. These batteries use a JBD BMS inside them, which I really like JBD BMSs. They are durable, and I can attest to that. I've used an overkill uh, BMS, which is JBD essentially, in my 48 volt packs. Yeah, I really like them, and I'll show you guys that here in a minute. And then they have some more info here on the plaque there. And this is what you would look for in the app. When you sign into the app that says Bluetooth, then you would look for that number there. They have the terminal covers for positive and negative. And these can be rotated to the side too. Like I said, if you have it in a camper or a tighter area and you need to have it come out the side, you can do that. Looks like I've already lost. I took these off once. Looks like I've already lost the one screw for that. I need to go look on the other table. But yeah, that is kind of the one thing. Like usually positive is on the left. So I guess it depends on how you're facing this battery here. But yeah, I would, I would think that would be over there. But anyway, yeah, let me pop this battery open and see what it looks like inside. Okay, not a lot of slack here. I'm gonna have to take these two terminals off here and then I can get the lid off. There we go, that should be it. Yep, so far so good. You can actually see the Bluetooth. Let me see if I can focus in a little bit. You can see the Bluetooth glued to the bottom with that white glue all these battery makers use. And then positive and negative leads here. Looks like yeah, we've got multiple different wires in here. I'll be able to see a little bit better when I get this off. I think this is glued on here. So now that we've got that insulator out of the way, you can see that they have bolted down the cells. So instead of laser welded cells like we see now, typically anyway, or unless you're looking at like an SOK battery or something like that, they went with bolt down, which is pretty neat. So you could technically service this battery if you needed to, if you needed to replace a cell. Although I think the most common failure would be the BMS. So they've actually got a foam protector there over those supports that cross the cells. And they do not block the vents, which is good. These are actually Eve cells, and I can put that on the screen here. But yeah, they're Eve cells. I checked the serial numbers on a few of them just to verify they were all from the same batch, and they were. But yeah, I really, really like Eve cells. I did a capacity test, and I can show a photo here of me hooking everything up. But yeah, it uh, I, I won't bore you with the details, but it is the exact same way I did the test in the other batteries. So I used the Victron Phoenix inverter. And the results were great. It passed with flying colors. So 470 amp hours of discharge on this battery. And here is where one of the temperature sensors was. So it's right in between the cells, right at the start there, underneath this tape. And it's got some of that white goo on it. And I'll show you the second one here down below. You can just barely make it out down by the Bluetooth module on the left. I get a better angle here, I think, in just a second. But yeah, you can see it underneath that negative terminal right there. And as I mentioned, this does have Bluetooth. So they do recommend an app for this. Uh, but because it's JBD BMS, and I, I told you guys about the overkill of BMS that I have already, I just use the overkill app with it. And so you can see all the different stats. You can make any changes you'd like to make with that app. So that's definitely the easier one to use. That would be the one I would recommend using for you guys if you're going to get this battery. All right, I've got the charger on right now and it is charging. I'm going to test the cold temperature protection here. I would actually like to be able to have put this guy in the freezer like I did my other one, but yeah, that's not going to work on this one. So I'll put it on this freezer pack here and we'll see if it will turn the charging off. All right, the charging just clicked off. I'll show you the app also. And it, I believe it says under temperature protection or something like that on there. But yeah, it worked. Now we'll warm it back up and it should start back up here. I wish I had my other phone with me. I would watch the cell temperature or the sensor temperature increase as it sits here. That would probably be pretty neat, but I don't have it with me. So you guys are just going to have to bear with me. I'll actually get, I'll get another snapshot when it starts charging again and we'll see what the cell, or the, uh, I keep saying cell temperature, but the sensor temperature. I would actually prefer the sensor be screwed down onto one of the cells 
just looks cleaner. I do like the one they have in the bottom though, because at least at that point, you know, it's gotten cold enough in the bottom of the case and that's where it's actually going to get cold first. And there it goes. So it took a couple minutes and everything heated back up. I'll grab a screenshot of what the app looks like now. All right, well, I'm going to button things back up, but yeah, I do like how they built things in here, how they designed things. I think I've mentioned it before. I might've edited it out of some of my other videos, but I think it's pretty neat in, in general with battery builds. When you have a group of cells, you can arrange them in different ways. It's sort of like uh, looking at designs for RVs or campers. You can, you've got basically the same amount of space that you're gonna have, but you can design it in so many different ways. So if you take, for instance, that Epic battery that I just reviewed, it's a 460 amp hour battery also, but they did it long ways instead. So yeah, you can design things in a lot of different ways. And really what we're talking about when we're looking at batteries in general is a box with cells. I mean, that's it, right? But then it's how they do it, how they design it, how everything's compressed, how the wires are run and where they put the BMS. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, you're, you're looking, every single battery is a box with prismatic cells in it if it's lithium iron phosphate, or it should be anyway. I don't recommend anyone get pouch cells. All right, guys, so that's gonna about wrap this up. This is a nice battery. You've got 460 amp hours of usable storage here. And by our testing, you actually have a smidge more than that. I actually like this build. It's neat to be able to have access to the BMS or the cells if you needed to. So down the road, if you wanted to service it yourself, there is that access door on the side there by the power button. I think you could probably get the BMS out with that. So it wouldn't take too long, I wouldn't think. But there is downsides to that. This isn't a sealed battery, so there is weaknesses there you're gonna to wanna to have it in an enclosed place somewhere safe from moisture. So that's why I mentioned RV storage, something like that. So if you compare it to the Epic battery that I reviewed shortly before this, that has heaters in it. So that is another thing here. This does not have heaters. It does have the cold temperature protection. So it's gonna shut the battery down if it's trying to sh charge uh, below 32 degrees. Whereas the Epic battery would just kick in the little heating pads and then continue on. On the other hand, that is going to use some of the storage to be able to heat the battery back up, to be able to charge it. And then again, like I said, you have access to the BMS on this. On the other hand, uh, with the Epic battery, you have an 11 year warranty. So I really don't know that having access to the BMS is gonna be that big of a deal with a sealed battery if you get the correct brand and if it's got a nice warranty. So really it's give and take, like I said, and then some of it could be priced too. The Epic battery right now in comparison to this is a bit cheaper, but as often happens with these battery companies, these will probably be on sale at some point. So then they may end up equaling up or this may be a bit cheaper. Vagra really has started to make a name for itself though. You know, it wasn't that long ago, they just had some small 100 amp hour batteries. And I can't say that the design was that great, but now it seems like, I don't know whether they hired some more people on the design team, but they've got these larger batteries and even the smaller batteries from videos I've seen, the quality has gotten way better. Like I mentioned before, I do really like the JBD BMS. I like being able to use the Overkill app to be able to look at things. That's pretty easy too. Vagra has just started to get into 48 volt battery builds as well here, probably six, eight months ago. So I'm hoping to be able to look at one of them in the future also. All right, I don't think there's that much more to say about the battery. I like the build, I like the handles, I like the design overall. <laughs>